28. Describe the molecular geometry and the hybridization of the nitrogen, phosphorus, or sulfur atoms in each of the following compounds. And then we have S2Cl2, which is disulfur, dichloride, used in vulcanizing rubber. Okay. That's an interesting uh, piece of information that I never thought I needed. But anyway, let's just find the molecular geometry and the hybridization. Now, if you want to find a molecular geometry and hybridization of a covalent compound, right, the first thing, or what I can suggest, is to always draw the Lewis structure first, right? As you get better and better and more adept at, you know, understanding geometry and hybridization, you can just look at this molecule and figure it out. But we are in the learning stages here, so... Just doing that one extra step, just doing the Lewis structure, um, will get you to the molecular geometry and hybridization with much more understanding of what's going on, because you can see a visual picture. So let's first draw the Lewis structure for S2Cl2. Now we have a, a playlist on the channel at the moment that just goes into Lewis structures and how to draw them with the steps on the screen. And since we already did all that, this is going to be kind of like a review, but I will we'll basically talk you through the steps. So the first thing here is to just figure out, well, which element is going to be the center one? Now I have between sulfur and chlorine. And generally, the least electronegative would go in the center, right? So... Between sulfur and chlorine, sulfur is less electronegative than chlorine. So I'm going to have two sulfurs right next to each other, because I try to make it as symmetrical as possible. I have two sulfurs right next to each other, and then I have two chlorines on the outer sides. So maybe I'll put Cl and Cl. Okay, I have my blue point, not my, my blueprint, right? And now I'm going to just put my valence electrons. So chlorine has seven valence electrons because it's in group 7A or 17. So for each chlorine, I'm just going to put seven dots around it. Same thing here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And sulfur has six valence electrons because it's in group 16 or 6A on the periodic table. So one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's single bond them up first, dot to dot, to just see what's going on. So dot to dot, dot to dot, and dot to dot. This one I kind of went a little bit over. There you go. Do we have the octet? Well, yes, we do. We have two, four, six, eight electrons for that chlorine. All good. This sulfur, two, four, six, eight. What a beauty. This sulfur, two, four, six, eight. Oh my gosh and chlorine 2, 4, 6, 8. So everybody has the octet. How easy was that? And now since we have a visual representation, we can easily find the molecular geometry. And in this case, we only care about the sulfur. So they look exactly alike to me, so it, it doesn't really matter which one you talk about. So maybe we'll do this one. Now when you're doing your geometries, just know that maybe your teacher or professor might not give you a, a chart for your quizzes or exams. You might have to memorize this information. So flashcard it out, do whatever you got to do to just make sure that you know the picture and what the name goes with it. So all you have to do to know how to use this chart is to just say to yourself, okay, well, I have sulfur and on this chart, that's the center atom. And they label the center atom as A. So you're looking for a center atom, which is A, that has how many elements bound to it? Well, the sulfur has a chlorine and another sulfur. In my general picture, those are your X's, right? All the ones that are not the center are the X's. So I have an A bound with two X's and just check your lone pairs. It's got two lone pairs. So dot, 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 dot. So now I go to my chart and I say, okay, which one is the one that has two substituents with two lone pairs? So, well, here's the two substituents, but no lone pairs. This one has the two X groups, but only one lone pair. 
And aha, here it is, two X's, two lone pairs. So the sulfur would be classified as bent. Bent, or I guess they say angular here, but I've always used the term bent. It's more prevalent. Now we can solve, or not solve, we can just identify what the hybridization is. Now hybridization is your list of five letters, right? And we can go through all of this, but I just kind of want to show you that it is not a coincidence that there are five tiers for hybridization. And if we count the number of electron pairs, there is five tiers. Is that a coincidence? I don't think so. So just know that another way, instead of counting how many things are, are around the element, you could also pinpoint your hybridizations based off of your molecular geometries. And they work the same way from top to bottom. So the first one would be all hybridizations of sp. The second one, you have two hybridizations for sp2. You have three hybridizations for sp3. You have four hybridizations for sp3d, right? One, two, three, and four. And then you have five different, uh, five versions of hybridizations for sp3d2. And so in, since we already said that we were here, you know that this is automatically sp3. And that is the answer. So each sulfur is, has, a, has a geometry of a bent with sp3 hybridization. And anytime that you have that bent structure, it's always going to be sp3 hybridized, no exceptions. And let's just color this in. I think I'm done. What a beautiful blue. Um, yeah, thanks. Thanks for joining me, right? Or thanks for watching, right? I just talked to myself in a room, uh, you know, just talking to the computer, but I hope you could learn from this video. And if you wouldn't mind, if you want to help us out, please hit the subscribe button. Uh, we're almost at 30,000 subscribers, and it's all because of you guys. So thank you so much for all your kind comments and your support throughout this whole journey. Let's keep working hard. We're going to work hard by, you know, putting out these videos for you guys to study from, and you guys just learn from them, and you'll do great on your tests. Let's keep going, and I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.